Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. We've still got the HTC 10 in house. All embargoes and all of that fun has lifted, so we can finally start diving in, going through software and look at the camera in depth and all that stuff before we lead up to our final review. So, before we get there, though, since a number of you are considering pre ordering and may soon own the device, we thought we'd give you the first 10 things you should do with the HTC 10. So like we've told you in the last couple of first 10 things videos, we're going to say once again to make sure you toss in a micro SD card. So the HTC 10, like the S7 and G5, allows for expandable storage. So since the phone only ships with 32 gig out of the box, and in the US that may be the only version we get, not the 64 gig version, you're going to want to toss in an SD card slot. So in the box, take out your little SIM tool and pop it right into that little pinhole, eject that, toss in an SD card slot or an SD card. So the uh, the phone supports up to two terabytes, theoretically, of extra storage. Uh, just go grab a 128 or 200 gig card and you should be good for a really long time. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, though, is this is one of the first new flagships that supports SD cards that also supports Android Marshmallow's adoptable storage. So you kind of need to make a decision here. You can see I've got this set up with all of my apps and I'm already, you know, well under half left. So uh, I did toss in a 200 gig SD card, but what you can do here if you go into the settings for your SD card is decide to format it as internal. So if you format it as internal, it then takes this 200 gig and sort of applies it as if it was all just one lump sum with the 32 gig storage you have in there. So that means just a more seamless experience of moving files around and all of that stuff. The other thing it does is encrypts everything. And, uh, and so if somebody were to steal your phone and take out your micro SD card, they can't access that unless it's in the phone. So it's kind of a safety measure. It's also something to consider. There are some maybe performance issues you have to worry about, um, but I don't know that those will plague you on this phone. So it's up to you if you want to do that. Also, if you want to keep the flexibility, don't do it in case you like taking your SD card in and out and all of that stuff and, and sort of not combining it with... Um, that internal storage. But either way, SD card slot, make sure you're tossing one in there. Uh, so the next thing I would say is master the shortcuts that HTC builds into the gestures here on the front screen. So there's a few of them. I have some off, some on. One is just double tap and that wakes up the screen and you can actually double tap and that will go back to sleep. Now you can't do that from the home screen like you can on the G5, but you can do it here from the lock screen. And it works most of the time. Uh, one of the other little shortcuts they've added is on the fingerprint sensor. If you just tap that once, promise it works. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to just tap that. There we go. And it wakes up. So that's just another, another option. Um, so another trick then is to swipe down twice on the screen and that launches the camera. So in case you want to jump into the camera quickly, uh, the other thing you can do is swipe up and that will actually enter your home screen. I have a secure lock, so I do have to, en I do have to enter that, but there are a couple of different things you can do. So if we jump into, uh, it displays gestures and buttons down here and go to the bottom, there's a section called motion launch gestures. Now, if you touch that, you can see this is all your stuff. So I have, double tap to wake and sleep checked, swipe up to unlock checked, and then I have the camera swipe. Now you can also do a swipe to the right to launch blink feed or swipe to left to go home as well. Kind of up to you if you want to use those. I don't necessarily need those, so I've disabled them, but I have the other ones on there. Uh, if you want access to the fingerprint um, tap and launch, you actually do have to go into fingerprint scanner unlock that and there's a wake up screen option up there where you can check that or uncheck that in case that's something you don't want to do speaking of fingerprints make sure you set a bunch of these up so hec has gone with a front mounted fingerprint sensor down here so if you want to use that uh well i actually i should say you should be using that it's just one of those convenient ways to secure your phone um but it's also a, a convenient thing so that you can just press your finger over there and unlock. So like with the Galaxy S7, since it's front facing, I would do both thumbs and both index fingers. So if it's laying on a desk like this and you want to unlock, you can just put your finger on there and do that. Uh, that is one of the benefits to having it on the front, whereas on the back, you actually have to pick it up and can't do that. So like the Nexus phones and the G5 are all sort of struggle in this area because theirs is on the back. So I got both thumbs and both index fingers. Make sure you set those up. All right, so if we unlock back into the device, I would argue, well, not argue, I would suggest you jump into the app drawer. And so when you first boot this phone out of the box, it's going to be set up in a custom sorted version. So you can see here, uh, it's not necessarily 
alphabetized and it's actually sort of difficult to figure out what the sorting is. Um, you can see there's some folders with Google Apps and things like that. Um, and then some of my other apps that are installed are down here as well. So decide kind of where you wanna go if you like that look or maybe you just want alphabetical, which is sort of the normal the normal flow here, which is kind of what I do. Also, you have some settings up here so you can manage apps to uninstall them, show or hide apps that you may not want, and you can actually change the grid size as well. So just some things you should set up to make it sort of flow in the way that you really want it to. Um, next thing that I'll show you is HTC's themes. So HTC does have a themes app. And so if we jump into the themes app, and I'm probably gonna need network for this, so we'll take her out of airplane mode. So. We will swipe that down. So in HCC's themes, like the G5 and like the S7, who also has themes, you, there's a bunch of pre-made themes in here you can actually choose from. Uh, and so you're, look, there's even one for the G5. So what you're gonna wanna do is just sort of scroll through this and see if there's something that catches your eye. Um, well, let's actually jump into that G5 one. So in here, you should be able to see some screenshots of what it'll look like. You know, it'll apply different wallpapers and change your icons and just some of the design elements um, in like the dialer and the messaging app and things like that. So it's something to consider. One cool thing that HTC does though is allow you to create your own. So if you hit that little plus button, it looks at what your wallpaper is and you can choose a different image if you want. But once you do that, it then sort of creates a custom theme based off of that wallpaper so you can see it's suggesting maybe those icons or or maybe these icons and this is what my blink feed will look like in the messenger app and the app drawer and so it sort of adds grabs colors tries to customize it to really give you an experience that uh that that really works with the wallpapers you choose which is pretty cool uh so splinky speaking speaking of blink feed we do still have blink feed over here to the left uh my suggestion here is feel free to use it. You can turn it off if you want. If you don't want to use it, you can pinch and uh, there it is and you can just grab it and drag it up to remove up there at the top. So if you don't want to use it, that is how you get rid of it. Um, if you do want to use it though, feel free to set it up. So if we go in here and go into settings, this is sort of where you're going to get all of your, all of your options. So uh, if we choose highlight topics, this is where you're going to be able to select the, the features or the, I should say, the services that you've attached to it. You can see I have Twitter and Fitbit on there. Um, you'll also, if we go back here and if we hit this plus button, this is where you can choose from other services and content. Like you could have your calendar show in there, your Google Plus feed, LinkedIn. Uh, News Republic and Mealtime recommendations are two that I'm not using, but News Republic is, is essentially the news app that fills up news inside of Blinkfeed, and it's a third-party app that you have to install. So it's kind of up to you if you really want to install that. But I've got my Fitbit and Twitter, and I'm thinking about putting my calendar on there as well. So even though I'm not using it for necessarily news, I am still able to get some of the stuff I want to see. Like I can, instead of opening the Twitter app, I can just look over here and get my Twitter feed really quick. Uh, so let's see, jumping into camera again, one of the things I always recommend you do, in the case it doesn't prompt you, is set your storage to SD card. So if we swipe out that menu, go into settings, and you're gonna wanna go down here to storage. And so default out of the box typically is internal storage, but since you put in that SD card slot, or the SD card in the SD card slot, you're gonna wanna save your photos there to save that internal storage. Make sure you choose removable there. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the camera. If we start jumping into some of the settings though, let's go ahead and look at power. So in the power settings, HTC has a couple of options. You have power saver and then extreme power saving mode. So extreme power saving mode is gonna come in handy when you're down to 5% and you know you're not gonna have a charger for hours. But power saver is actually kind of handy. So I have mine set up to automatically turn on when my phone gets to 15%. And that's that's the default out of the box. You can change this to whatever you want. So I would highly suggest you decide sort of where you want and make sure that box is enabled because there could be a time where all of a sudden your battery's draining. Maybe it's an app killing your battery in the background. Just by checking this, that should maybe eliminate that in case you aren't realizing it sort of save you um, during a crisis or emergency and keep you some battery left. So I would highly recommend just going in and make sure that box is checked and then choosing a specific uh, percentage. Uh, so the next thing I would do then is, uh, and I believe it's in here, is make sure you set up do not disturb modes. I, I recommend this on a lot of phones, but it's just one of those things where you sort of set it and forget it. So do not disturb, especially if you set up schedules, you can see mine is, I think that's touch with schedule because it pulled from my S7. Essentially what this allows you to do is have your phone automatically turn itself into a silent phone at night and then come back on again in the morning. So you can see mine, 
turns on at 11.45 at night, goes back off at 6.30 a.m. I have it do it every single day. Now you can have this allow for calls to come through, specific contacts to be able to get through and all that stuff. But essentially it allows your phone to go into silent, let you get a good night's sleep and you don't have to do anything. Again, you just sort of set it and forget it. And you can go in and add different rules depending on the time or an event or something like that. So you can really sort of set up multiple schedules if you want to uh, help you get uh, a, a quiet night's sleep or a quiet meeting or, or depending on you know what you're doing. Uh, so the last thing I would say then and let me see if I can find this because they are kind of hiding it. And it is managing ads. So I actually think, oh, it's, it may be in the personalized section. So if we jump into personalize, um, and there's this manage ads option. So essentially it says, if you check this box, you're turning off interest-based ads. So it says, don't show ads from HTC Incense Home. This choice doesn't block ads that aren't delivered by HTC. So what that's saying is there's there's potential depending on widgets and blink feed and all of that that could show ads uh, on your home screen experience on this phone. If you don't want to see those ads, just check that box and you should have a much, much cleaner experience. So anyway, that's just been the first 10 things you should do with your HTC 10. Uh, one of the things I will point out though, it was sort of tough for me to come up with 10 and this is not a negative. It's just that there's there's not a lot of customization to do here with HTC 10 and I appreciate that. HTC's really sort of cleaned up their UI and options and all this stuff and really left it up to you to install third-party apps to really make it your own. So they've kept it simple, clean, which we appreciate. So this was a tough first 10 to do, but Overall, I think those 10 things will help you get the most out of your phone right out of the box. If you guys have comments, questions, let us know. We're Joy Life. Peace.